Hey guys, good morning. Welcome to Wednesday. I have a word for, for you and I hope that it blesses you. My name is Marilyn Acosta and the scripture that we're going to walk through today comes from 2 Corinthians, a little bit from 2 Samuel and we're going to talk about Jehu who was a mighty man who did some wonderful work for the Lord. Um, so I hope all of this blesses you, but the whole thing that we're going to talk about is ungodliness and how important it is to be separated from Belial, which represents the evil workings of Satan. And so this is hard because so many people, you know, are unequally yoked, whether it's in marriages, our friendships, our business partners, whatever it may be. The Bible says that it is so critical for us to be equally yoked and when you're not, it can cause strife, it can cause division, it can cause issues. So, you know, it's really important that we involve God in the process of, in every way possible so that we know that we are equally yoked. Because like the Bible says, <laughs> how can two walk together unless they agree? So I want to read to you from 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And it says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. This is verse 14. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God as God has said. I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean and I will receive you. Dwell, I'm sorry, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the God Almighty. Listen, that is a promise right there. If we are if we come away from unrighteousness, if we walk with those who are pleasing to God, if we come out from among them and be separate, the Lord says he promises to be your father and that we will be his sons and daughters. And this is hard for a lot of people because they don't want to leave the familiar. Abraham had to leave everything that he knew in order to fulfill the promises of God. He had to walk by faith. And a lot of us want to hold on to what God has said to release now I'm not talking about just getting rid of friends just to get rid of people I'm talking about those people those relationships that the Lord has told you to come away from it's important that you're obedient when Abraham asked him to leave his family it was for a reason because God sees the beginning from the end he knows a man's heart we get attached to people and we think that people love us the way we love them but it's not always the case and God sometimes can see that these people are not going to serve me in the way that I would want them to and they will become a stumbling block for you instead of you rubbing off on them they are rubbing off on you and you know what that's called transference of spirits it's real you all you can hang around somebody and you can either pick up the good in them or you can pick up negative quality it's a transfer of spirits. And God, if he tells you to come away from someone, it's because it's for, trust him. It's for a reason and he will reveal it by and by. And so I just think that's so important because even in the Corinth church, you know, Paul had to go and really get it on them and because of their sexual immorality. They were impure. There was envy. There was strife. There was contention. And this was within the church. A lot of people think that you can just walk with believers just because they say they believe in Christ. And that is not the case. How can two walk together unless they agree? You're always striving to grow in the knowledge of Christ. You're trying to get better. You're always wanting to learn new things. And this person is just content, complacent should be the word, where they are. They're not trying to develop. They are just moving at, they're moving in slow motion and God is accelerating you. How can y'all walk together? You're speed walking and they're just moseying along, you know? So that's why even with uh, believers, it's important that you are equally yoked so that you continue to develop at the speed of the Holy Spirit, the way he wants you to develop. And so when he says release some things, 
you've got to release it because the Bible says, what fellowship does Belial have with Christ? Just because people say they serve God, just because they say, Lord, Lord, we know that based on scripture doesn't mean they're of the kingdom. We have a lot of believers that profess to be a lot of things, but they're not of Christ. They're not sons and daughters. There's a difference. He says, if you will not touch the unclean thing, I will receive you and I will call you sons and daughters. Don't you want to call sons and be called a son or daughter of the most high God? Because guess what? With that comes an inheritance of just many blessings of just walking with the father you are not just a a member but you are a father you are a friend you are truly family and that's why in the bible he says the friends of god are who he tells his secrets to not everybody knows god's secrets when jesus was going to the mount uh the mountain for his transfiguration he didn't bring everybody he brought the three disciples with him. Only three of them went with him. So it's just important that we understand that we cannot walk with ungodliness and expect for it to grow. Transference of spirits are real. If you, The Bible said don't even hang out with an angry man. Somebody that's angry and that hasn't dealt with their anger and they are just an angry person. The Bible says have no fellowship with them because you can get a transference of that spirit. That's why when I see characteristics of anger and all of those things, you pray for that person, but you cannot be in close fellowship. Now, does that mean you don't go to the lost and you don't um, share the gospel? No, it's just talking about you don't walk closely with these people. You don't share your vision with these people. You are not in a close fellowship okay that's that's different and i think that's hard for people to grasp that understand it but just pray about it because 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 he's faithful to to show you and i just took a lot of of notes and david even talks about the flood of belial and he refers to it as a flood like when the flood comes in when it's just full of ungodliness we see this in our news we see this with our media we see this even with um you know music this is just all enwrapped in our industry and so it's just really critical that you know you make a decision that you're going to walk with the lord and when you make a decision to walk with the lord he's going to fill you with your holy his holy spirit and he's going to help you um he's going to help you to develop and grow in christ so you don't have to worry about you know getting it wrong or right you know you're not perfect you're going to make mistakes so it's just important to you know, love the Lord God with your whole heart. Ask God to help you to do that. And he is so faithful to show you how to love him. He'll, he's so faithful to show you how to pray, how to worship. He's going to teach you. He's going to walk with you. It's just a promise that he gives his children for those who seek after him with everything that they have. And um, another scripture that the Lord led me to actually yesterday was about Jehu. And ever since... I don't know, maybe a year ago, two years ago, the Lord has been teaching me about Jehu. And Jehu, it was something else, okay? He was the man that pretty much gathered all of Baal worshipers together, much like Elijah, and he had them desecrated. He, he had them all killed by the sword. Jehu says, you know, Ahab served Baal much, but I will serve him greater, meaning that he was going to make a mockery of Baal worship. He was going to wipe them off of the face of the earth. And so Jehu gathers all of the Baal worshipers together and he makes sure that there are no men of God. And he makes sure that it is only the worshipers of Baal and he marks them and they give this sacrifice what they think to Baal at the temple. And he just basically annihilates them, you all. And I think it's just a picture of an image. When we're walking with God, he calls us to be separate. We have to tear down all of the high altars. We have to tear everything out of our life that doesn't serve God. And sometimes people want to hold on to things that don't seem so bad in our eyes. But God's saying, release it. And sometimes when he asks you to release people or things especially with people it's not that they may be so bad but maybe you're hindering their walk maybe they're depending too much on you and he's saying 
you've got to release them so that they can walk deeper with 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 me they're making you a god are they just god knows their hearts not everybody that smiles in your face wants to see you win i say that all the time just because people are in your your midst or they call themselves your friend let me tell you doesn't mean that they want the best for you and this is hard but the lord will reveal their spirit to you and when he reveals it don't just take forever to walk away from me i made this mistake it took me forever to walk away from some relationships that the lord showed me specifically that they were not good um but i had to pray until i prayed for god to give me the strength to let them go that was only when i had the power to release them when you try to do things in your own strength you won't be able to do it. You're going to fall short. So it's important to ask the Lord to help you so that you can let go of those bad habits, those people, or those situations that don't honor God. So, yeah, I just wanted to drop that word really quickly to you all because I know that is a very difficult thing for people to let go of. But there has to be a distinction between believers of Christ and those who, you know, say they believe in God. Even the devil believes in God. Even the devil proclaims who Jesus Christ is. So we just have to be very careful in this hour that we're not being contaminated. Because the Bible says, God himself says, if you will release the unclean thing, I will receive you. That can be people. That can be things. That can be traditions. You know, there are certain things when I became a believer, the Lord said, you can't take part of. I don't want you touching even it, a, any of it, like Halloween. That was one of the first things the Lord said, no, I don't even want you touching it. I don't, I don't care what they call it. Touch not the unclean thing. And the Lord has blessed me for my obedience. And that's the thing. When you are obedient, even when you don't understand, even when it causes issues within your own family, when you are just obedient to the word of God, he is going to bless you for your faithfulness. Even in this hour, God is blessing so many of his children for their faithfulness. Faithfulness. Those who stood on the word of God, those who knew they heard a word from God, and they stood on his promises, no matter what it looked like, no matter that people are making fun of them for it, oh my gosh, we are being blessed in this hour. We are being crowned with a crown of righteousness and favor. Oh yes. So it's just important that you walk with God. No matter what man thinks of you, it's better to be faith, seen faithful in the eyes of God. You know, I think about Abraham when he had to sacrifice, when he was told to sacrifice his only son, the promise. He was ready to be obedient to the father. He took Isaac with him up to the mountain, prepared him for a sacrifice. And guess what? Because of his obedience and his faithfulness, the Lord provided a ram when there seemed no possible what other way. He wasn't even expecting it. And that's how it is for many of us. Our, we win battles through our obedience. Blessings come from our obedience. No matter how hard it is to release or to let go of something, God could just be testing your faith to see if you will just release that thing for him and he'll bring it back in another season. He's just testing you just like he tested Abraham. And when he passed the test, he was just, you know, blessings on blessings. The Lord said, now I know that you love me. Many of us are being tested in this hour. And God is saying, now I know that you love me. Isn't that beautiful our obedience is powerful that's why i tell you don't get caught up with these people who are saying oh i'm not gonna serve I, i'm not gonna you know joe biden's not gonna be my president okay then you just continue to be disobedient to the word of god you continue to put your feelings over the word of god because god says we are to pray for authority we are to respect those he has placed in authority no matter whether you like him or not because God sets up kings and he brings them down it's not about whether you like them or not do you obey the word of God does his word set priority over your feelings hello yeah then you have to respect who is in leadership and you're called to pray for them and when you are 
obey God. Let me tell you something. When you put God's word over your feelings, watch out for the overflow. Watch God open the heavens, the gates of heavens for you. You watch just like he did for Abraham. He tests our faithfulness. Guys, we always get tested. Oh, yes, he's a God that tests and proves. So this is going to be an interesting day. I cannot wait to see what it unfolds. But you all put the word of God before your feelings. Trust in him. He is a way maker. He didn't bring us this far to leave us. God will bless us even in fame. And God blesses his children. Okay? Like I always say, when there was darkness in Egypt, there was light in Gashon. We're going to be all right. God always provides a way of escape for those who believe in him. So I just pray you all have a wonderful day. Have a blessed day. I love you all. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on the prize. Do not get distracted. Do not walk in offense, but walk in love. It's so important that you don't let people get under your skin. The Bible said it is to our glory to look over an offense. That means it's to your blessing. It's to your benefit. So y'all take care and have a blessed day. Talk to you later.